You're listening to The Invisible Addiction, a podcast investigating problem gambling. It soon became the point I couldn't watch uh, a game of football without a bet. That's a discipline you, you don't have as an addict. You know, even if I did have plans, you never stick to them. I deluded myself that, you know, I was, yeah, a football expert and I would never be wrong. It was always the anticipation of how much I was going to win. Okay, so today's guest is sharing their gambling addiction story publicly for the first time. He has a huge following on social media with hundreds of thousands of views on his gambling awareness videos on TikTok and Instagram. Earlier this year, his Twitter account went viral with one of his tweets that detailed his gambling losses, spending almost half a million pounds over the course of 12 years. I'm hugely excited he's given up his time today to speak with us. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce the one, the only, Nick, (laughs) aka Gambling Card. Nick, how are you doing? Wow, um, quite an introduction, yeah. Cheers, Alex. Um, no, look, I'm excited. It's uh, no pleasure to be here, mate. Yeah, good to speak to you. No, it's um, it's 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 great that you're here, and uh, I've been really looking forward to this one because, um, well, if anything, like George Cooper said on Twitter, just been really looking forward to hearing what you sound like. I, I know, I can, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not Ariana Grande. It's not Jeremy Clarkson. It's it's not you know. Uh, whoever else can't really live up to probably what people what people thought but yeah it's basically a guy with a, a slightly tamed down Cornish accent so here I am yeah. <laughs> there we go so well talking of which so so you're from Cornwall originally then and born and born and bred born and bred yeah I've uh, lived in Cornwall all my life apart from uh, three years in Wales in Swansea um, which is basically the closest thing you can get to Cornwall anyway it's the closest you need to a beach in in the UK um, and yeah came back to Cornwall live in Troy yeah I don't know if you know Cornwall pretty well but uh, yeah yeah not not too, not too familiar I've been down to uh, Watergate Bay um, okay no, it's, uh, yeah it's nice yeah. like 20 minutes away yeah Troy Troy isn't the part with beaches but it's sort of 20 minutes from Newquay 20 minutes from Falmouth so yeah um, it's the if Cornwall has a commercial hub, business hub, that's what Truro is. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I've, um, I've come across Truro a little bit on the football side of things because I think they've got a football team and I think they've had some ups and downs recently with their finances and stuff. I'm not too yeah, sure. Yeah, they've had a few, a few takeovers and stuff. Um, FA Files winners, 2009. Or 2000, no, before that actually, it must have been 2005, six. But yeah, yeah they're sort of, uh, I think they're conference south now. Yeah. So, yeah. Happy days. Happy days. Well, well. Obviously, we're going to dive into sort of gambling addiction story today. Um, we'll, we'll kind of come onto that shortly, perhaps. But I don't know. Would you like to maybe spend a minute or two just sort of properly introducing yourself, telling us a little bit more about your background and experience? Uh, yeah. So I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm director of a recruitment company. Um, I've nearly at the time of recording. I'm just past eleven months clean. Um, Happy days. After a 12 year addiction, so yeah, from 2007 to 2019, um, which, yeah, pretty much completely consumed me. Um, I did I did go periods, um, you know, certainly between 2017 and 2019, I did go through periods of uh, abstinence, if you like. You know, I'd go a couple of months without a bet, and, you know, I was trying, you know, really hard. And then that was the sort of closest thing I got to quitting but then it would flare up again in a really big session or a big month or a big loss but certainly the previous 10 years was um yeah completely consumed by by gambling mainly a sports gambler um and right. pretty much all online i think i've been in the bookies you know having lost that like half a million pounds to, to bookies you think this is crazy but i think i've been in the bookies physically twice maybe three times um yeah all online all on pretty much all on the phone yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so am i right in saying that your first winning bet was uh what january 2014 uh, t- sorry 2004 january 2004 yeah so um i turned 18 in december um and yeah you know like like a lot of 18 year olds it's a rite of passage isn't it so it was that's all it was so it was, it was on a lunch break from sixth form um just with the mate and yeah we were pretty bored and he had also just turned 18 and we just thought well look we'll just go and have the right of passage just just have a bet 
Yeah. It was ten pounds uh, on Middlesbrough to be Arsenal uh, in a Carling Cup uh, semi final, and the only reason I bet on Arsenal was because I support Spurs. That was literally. I uh, bet on Middlesbrough was because I support Spurs. It's literally it. <laughs> you know, there's no, there was no form study. There was no, you know, yeah. he supported Arsenal. I supported Spurs. Um, I just did it to. It was a bit of a wind up, really. Um, and unfortunately, Middlesbrough pulled off an upset with a Juninho goal, um, which I can still remember. Um, Who'd have thought? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, unbelievably, and they won one 0 So um, yeah, ten pounds turned into forty, and uh, yeah, I often think, you know, what would have happened if I didn't win that bet? Yeah, you know, I would have thought, like, okay, gambling's a monk's game, or the rest of it, because I won. Yeah, yeah, that that's certainly where the um the seeds were sown, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. I think there's there's a lot made about that first winning bet, isn't there? Um, I think in my case, yeah. I think um, I mean I must I must I'd probably say this on every single podcast, but I won um, yeah seven pounds twenty on uh, off a twenty p roulette bet, and uh, yeah, I just think what if if I hadn't won that, would I have been hooked or I don't know? Uh, it's I don't want to kind of live in the whole what if world, but um, you do question that that first winning bet, and if it if it had been different. Yeah, you definitely do. And, you know, there's science behind it as well. You know, it's the, um, before the age 25, you know, your frontal cortex is still developing and, you know, your brain is literally rewiring itself. So, I mean, I presume yours, I, well, I've heard yours before, you know, the age mm. you put on as well. Yeah, you know, your brain is rewiring itself and obviously the first exposure it had to gambling, you know, it's sort of creating all its, his pathways and receptions was success and it was win and it was a good feeling. Mm. The fact it was 20p into seven quid for you and 10 quid into 40, you know, the money was irrelevant, but it was the, you know, it was just that buzz of, of the win. Mm. Um, but I, you know, I wasn't addicted straight away though. Um, I would, I would continue to bet, but, um, and I would, you know, I'd start losing money here and there and, you know, whatever, but the stakes were still about the same, you know, it'd be, I was still a student, right? So it's, um, 10 quid, 20 quid a time. Um, maybe a little bit more on, on the tournaments and stuff, world cups, euros, you know? Um, yeah. but again, I would justify that and say, if I lost maybe a couple hundred quid on a world cup, so oh, that's the world cup, right? So, yeah. um, certainly nothing I would deem as a problem until, uh, 2007. Right. And it was uh, November 2007, I set up my first online account um, with Betfair. Um, it's mm. probably no coincidence. And I'm not, you know, I am, um, I'm not one to, you know, put all the blame at the gambling company's doors at all. Um, mm. after, um, not about that. But um, September 2007, so just two months prior, was when the 2005 Gambling Act was uh, implemented. Okay. So a couple of, you know, it had been brought in a couple of years ago, but it uh, had been implemented in, in September and that's when all the adverts came out. Mm. Opening up a new account, free sign-up bonus, all that palaver. And that's what I did, you know, with, with Betfair. Um, and yeah, it was at that point then, you know, where uh, it, it developed pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, because uh, prior to the 2005 Gambling Act, it wasn't until um, I researched for my own first podcast about my own gambling addiction story. And I thought, oh, well, I better do some research if I'm going to release this. And, and I was just amazed before 2005, that before the act, there, there wasn't any TV or radio adverts. I, I mean, I don't know if you can correct me there or, or, or not, but but I'm, pr- I'm just I, my mind is blown how the fact that it was just like, right, we're just now going to allow this. Um, and yeah. uh it, yeah i mean i yeah I, I i don't know if there were none but there were certainly mm. um but again i would have been at the age where i wouldn't have maybe maybe not have noticed so much because mm-hmm. whatever but yeah you know it was around that time and suddenly that was the ray winston era yeah you know of uh, all that stuff and that's that's when it started and yeah i began linking it um very much you know to to pretty much every game I watched, you know, it soon became the point I couldn't watch uh, a game of football without a bet. Blimey. And uh, that was, so that was near the end of my time at uni actually. Um, and obviously by that point, you know, your skin's 
you know, you've got no money. You may be not socializing quite so much in your third year and stuff, but still absolutely skint, still wanted money to go out. Um, you know, with three years of student debt already saddled. And I think in the in by the time I left uni in the like the June, July, I was already like four or five grand of credit card debt. Wow. Just from just from November. You know, I know it in the end it went to half a million or whatever, but that mm. all came a, a long time afterwards. But when I say it escalated quickly, yeah, it went from November, having never placed a bet online, to July as a student, already sort of four or five K in there. Blimey. Blimey. Well, just just out of interest, what did you study? Uh history. Ah, yeah, okay. history. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. What was um what was Swansea yeah. like? I I've heard it was uh I've heard from friends it's 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 a good good uni, good place. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great uni. Um yeah, great. It, yeah, it is great uni. Fun, fun city. Um, you know, it, it's not um, not the biggest city. You know, it lives in the shadow of Cardiff. You know, so you would you would go to Cardiff quite often for different bits. But um, no, I think it's got a decent decent balance. It's got a pretty bad rep. You know, <laughs> they, they they take pride. I think uh, one of the poets, Dylan Thomas, I think is it me. Um, the quote it's a pretty shitty city um oh not sorry i think that was twin sound actually not dylan thomas dylan thomas an ugly an ugly lovely place or something which is which is about right it's yeah. got it's got its charm i still go back now actually i've still got mates there so uh, oh do you i still go back mm. yeah did you ever get round to like tenby in pembrokeshire that's quite nice i've been on holiday there a few times it's quite nice yeah yeah, yeah, not while I was at uni. Actually, I was more interested in Wine Street, which is the, you know, the, the Swansea Strip, if you like. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> since, since I've left uni, yeah, Brecon Beacons and all that. Yeah, Wales is, yeah. is, yeah. I mean, Wales is very similar to Cornwall, which is why I like it. So. Yeah, absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I've got a real notorious, like really notorious for just going off on tangents. My my brother's like, stay focused, stay focused, right? <laughs> so, um, so to 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 bring this kind of detoured fl- flight back into to land, um, would you? So, sorry, that was my attempt at humour. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. It's it's my. I'm I'm, I'm using my friend's jokes. I enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say I've got a love for the the office things that you do. I mean, we'll talk about the the videos, and I'm sure, but um, yeah. So, okay, right, serious face, serious face. Um, so. So yeah, you've gone you've gone from November to July, and you've got yourself in a lot of debt. So, so with that is that's just sports betting at this point. Are you are you kind of are you are you using tactics at this point? Are you researching your bets, or is it? Yeah, um, yeah, prob- quite early on, but probably not while I was still at uni. You know, because I'm still, um, you know, and this is part of the danger. Actually, I was still learning. You know, and I say that in like speech marks, you know, I'm still learning. And, um, you know, honestly, if you'd asked me at that point, a professional gambler would have been quite high on my list of desired careers. Really? You know, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it as being because you, you did have big wins. You know, I, I had big wins, you know, mm-hmm. and I had enough big wins that would sustain the interest and the feasibility of it being possible. And because I'd only been doing it for a few months, seriously. You know, I almost feel it as like learning my trade, mm. you know, mm. and yeah. okay, I'm going to lose a bit and almost collateral damage. I rack up a bit of debt, but I'm learning the game. So no, I didn't really have a plan, but I was um, starting to learn how to trade on Betfair, you know, so I was starting mm. to back and lay and try and green and up my books and stuff. Um, but uh, no, I, I didn't really have a plan, but it, yeah, it was only, it was only, I mean, apart from, Vegas, which we can maybe come on to because I've been there far too many times, but um it was it was only ever sports betting for me. Um mm. I know you're almost the opposite, aren't you? You know, yours was mainly um, yeah. you know, the casino games, but for me, um you know, it, I, I, it was almost you know, looking back in it and as you know, as the addiction, it was almost like an arrogance, I think. And it almost enabled me to think that I don't have a problem. You know, um, mm. casino games, to my mind, you know, unless you were in Vegas, you know, that was 
that was I, I viewed that even as someone who was you know pretty deep in gambling already by this point I viewed casinos as yeah like it's, it's it's just pure maths you know you're gonna lose in the long run you know almost like I was proud of the fact it's like well, no I'd never get into real out of blackjack because it's just maths you will lose but with football you know I could convince myself well no but I know I know more than they do you know, and I know the game and I, I know football or I know boxing, you know, and I, it was, uh, I'd convinced myself I was smart enough and smarter than other betters that it wouldn't happen to me. You know, I, I would win. I would do well at this and I, you know, potentially even have it as a career. Mm. Obviously, you know, it never ever happened like that and it just became worse and worse and worse. But, um, yeah, the casino online you know they have very little interest um i I would occasionally do it if i had a big win say i had or a kish win you know say i won i don't know whatever it could be 430 pounds yeah i would i would set aside the 400 and the 30 or the 32 whatever it was i would put on a number you know it's just yeah i did a, a tweet about it ages ago but it's like the gambling addicts equivalent of putting change in a charity box that you is know, so on point like, that is so on point yeah 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 it's like you know you're in a shop you get 20 people just put it in the pot mate right yeah it's like 432 well for some reason the 32 pounds just have no meaning to me so it's like okay well I, it's quite nice to win 400 pounds but i don't need the 32 mm. so let's just put that on you know, my number was 22 is my birthday. So let's just put on 22 and occasionally that would win, you know, mm. and then you'd, you'd obviously have whatever the state was and, you know, every, not a few hundred quid or whatever, maybe more than that sometimes. But, um, yeah, that was the only time I would ever really double apart from when I actually physically went to Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really interesting. You talk about Betfair and like laying bets and, and it being, kind of a think you know almost like a thinking man's kind of game and 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 certainly for me I had no experience with Betfair at all I mean um this is not one big advert for Betfair by the way <laughs> but, but <laughs> so we'll be really careful with this but um how does how does lame I don't know I, I, well I, I'm gonna ask it but what is lame yeah, so, I don't so, even know what it is you know lame bets it, and all that it, sort of stuff, yeah. I think it's worth uh, it's worth talking about it because you know it it um you know, again, there's no way to say anything like this without sounding, you know, um, whatever. But, you know, I, I, I was smart, you know, I was doing really well at uni, ended up with a first and stuff. You know, I prided myself on my intelligence. Mm. So I, I would have been appalled at the prospect if you told me then that I was going to have a 12 year addiction and, you know, lose everything I've worked for over a decade. I would have been disgusted with myself. But I, you know, convinced myself that wouldn't happen to me because, I, I was smart enough to do it. So you would you would bet on whoever, you know, it might be, you know, Spurs, or not Spurs, bad example, because I didn't bet on him very often as my team, but just say you bet on Real Madrid um, and their price was, say it was 1.4, you know, so just around uh, one to two on. Um, if they scored, they would get on to about one to 10. Yeah. you know, 1.1, 1. 1. 1. Um, and you would cash out. So if you put, say, 100 quid on, you know, to win 140, you could then lay your stake for a guaranteed 30, but then you 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 wouldn't risk the 100. So okay. you could put the 100 on something else. And, you know, it's essentially, you know, you would put money on a bet and then you would, you would trade off when the odds dropped. So it was okay. trying to... You know, it's trying to figure out what uh, you know what is likely to happen. It's it's easier to do on anti post stuff, right? You know, tournaments and there's a lot of like golf traders and cricket traders. Mm. Um, where you, you know, it's it's actually a bit easier to do. But again, my problem was anti post betting had no interest in me. I was after the instant gratification. Mm. You know, I wasn't interested in who was going to win the Premier League. Um, or even who was going to win, you know, that week. It was like, right, who's going to be ahead by halftime? You know, who's going to score the next goal? 
I, I wanted I wanted the instant buzz. Yeah. Um, which uh, you know, and then when you do that, that's not a way to do uh, to do trading. Um, not not what I'm saying is a good way to trade. You know, but mm. I, I I obviously I, you know. Uh, you know, yeah. as a disordered gambler, as a gambler and addict, there was certainly no no way that I was ever going to succeed doing what I was doing. Yeah, it's um, it, it's interesting you say that because to, towards the end of my addiction, it was like I was I started to it's 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 weird. I, I then went on to sports betting as if I was going to sort of become uh, right. I needed to make money sort of thing. So I, I was starting to bet on like both teams to score. Um, and then started to lay like accumulators on that. And then it would get really obscure. Like you say, I just wanted, wanted that instant gratification. Um, so if it was eight o'clock in the morning and I was betting on Australian soccer, like great. I could even watch it, I think, on my app and stuff like that. And um, yeah, 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 it was like, give, give me the money now. I need it now, you know. Um, <laughs> it, and, exactly that, yeah. 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 I, I would, you know, if I was doing an accumulator, yeah, this is how deep in that mindset I was. You know, if there was... Um, there would be weekend fixtures and you know people would do like a weekend acker mm. i i would do a 12 i would do a lunchtime kickoff acker you know so i choose the premier league kickoff yeah if there was an 11 a.m la liga there would be some chinese games at nine oh, you know i'm goodness, not I'm, yeah. yeah i'm not gonna have an acker rolling over till sunday evening are you mad <laughs> but i could win three ackers by then um I'm mean, exactly the same. Yeah. I can relate so much. Exactly yeah. the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. I I, I didn't pick uh, a, a Sunday evening, you know, a, a Sunday evening game. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know. Yeah. Oh, by by Sunday evening, you know, I I wanted to be five grand up, and I could have put five k on Barcelona at home for just an easy top up, you know, to run the weekend <laughs> off nicely. Yeah. Um, which is you know, and then you're looking for stuff to bet on, so you know, you quickly then have gone already from, okay, I know my football or I know my boxing. I'm going to bet on who I know in the leagues I know to suddenly, yeah, okay. So there's the Spanish Segunda division, you know, Spanish second division. Mm -hmm. Hmm. All right, I'll look at the form, you know. Okay, they've not, they've won five out of six at home. Decent. You know, and I I have no idea. I couldn't couldn't tell you the players, you know, I don't know who they're managed by. So suddenly... You know, you, you lose all sense of knowledge and form and stuff. And mm-hmm. again, you just, you know, that's a discipline you, you don't have as an addict. You know, even if I did have plans, you never stick to them. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, I, 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 I don't do it anymore, but I used to be a football referee. And that was another thing. We were not allowed to bet on the game. Um, I, was, I was sort of um, at non-league level, so the lower kind of ends of the pyramid as it were. But um, yeah, we weren't allowed to bet. And um, I did bet as well, actually. Um, not, not proud of that, but, um, but I used that. That was my mindset of like, well, I know what I'm on about. You know, I've played the game. I referee the right. game. I know what I'm doing. Um, it was just that arrogance thing as well. Like uh, as if I've got insider knowledge and yeah. Yeah. Delus- like it's delus- delusional, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I deluded myself that, you know, I was, yeah, a football expert, and I would never be wrong. Um, and again, the, you know, the problem, you know, the problem is, yeah, you know, like when I, you mentioned about the tweet that, you know, um, you know, brought more attention to my account in the summer. That was, uh, I had so many messages from people saying, I, you know, just trolls, but you must be a shit gambler. You never, you, what, really? you never won over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blimey. I had loads of hun- hundreds of messages to support and yeah. people wanting to help and stuff and all, you know, yeah, all that. Yeah. But also a lot, you know, you know, 10 or 20, you know, trolls, if you like, just been like, you must be a shit gambler. You never won. So no, mate, I, I won a lot. That was the problem. You know, there, there, were, there weren't many weekends where I would not, not win at all. Mm. You know, I would, I, the problem is I would win and I would end up losing my winnings. Yeah. Because I would just I would just keep going. So if I did win and I may have started on a weekend with, you know, my stakes were progressing by the time I was in work and stuff after uni. But, you know, you might start a weekend putting 50 quid on an accumulator and then by the end of the weekend, I've built the bank up to 500 mm. and suddenly I'm putting 500 on an accumulator. Yeah. The, the, bu- the buzz for me was you know this is where i think the dopamine you know reflecting on it the dopamine hit for me would always come from the the potential win 
you know, so I, I would just, I would spend hours looking at the win. It's just like 6,400 pounds. Great. You know, and then you, you start, that, that was it for me. It was, the, it was always the anticipation of how much I was going to win. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, I think for me, it was like I was just going for the small wins. It was like, right, I'll put a five pounds on both teams to score because the, the odds are sort of even. And I'll get a tenner back, and um, it was my mindset was like the small, small and often, small and often little wins. And then I started rather than just putting on one game, I started to bet on loads of different games, and yeah, would would end up lo- lo- like losing my money. It was it's interesting actually to make this. Uh, whilst I remember, I spoke to a guy in um, the, the first episode of this this new series and um lewis and he won it was at 16 and he won sixty three thousand pounds um from a 12 team accumulator and but yeah. that was across the weekend and i mean like talk about like heart in your mouth kind of territory it's just like I, I, it almost makes me feel a bit it gives me that anxiety in my chest of like that what that would have felt like obviously winning yeah great but that that feeling um of of the anticipation and, and all that sort of stuff. It's yeah. Oh, well, we're, we're, we're jumping ahead in the story, but my biggest sorry, Nick. My yeah, biggest, sorry, Nick. No, no, no. But I, just to relate to that, my biggest ever win, which isn't that you know the stakes I was doing, you know, wasn't that big really. But my biggest ever win was uh, nine thousand. You know, so not 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 any yeah, but not anything like the sixty three k or anything. Oh, well, I didn't get anywhere oh, near. By the way, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that to compete, you know, with, with no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't win 63 K. Um, that's for sure. Cause I won nine K and, um, I was completely numb to it. So I, I had the biggest win I'd ever had and I was completely numb to it. And I remember, um, my, my brother who, uh, was actually like a boxing journalist, you know, hmm. so he talks about betting as part of his job and stuff. Um, and I remember him, um, I was on the phone to him, he said, look, Nick, you, you've completed it now. Like, you've completed the game. You know, trying to get me to stop, right? Yeah. Um, although we've never really had a conversation about how deep an addiction I was, but, you know, he just sort of gently said, okay, mate, you've completed it now. Just you walk away. Like, what, nice one. You've won, you've completed it. Obviously, I went to bed thinking, yeah, okay, cool. And then I woke up in the morning and I can remember it really vividly. I woke up in the morning about six o'clock and it was, it was an international weekend. Um, like Euro qualifiers was the act that I won. Um, and early in the morning, there was the Asian qualifiers, Japan, Australia, China were all playing. So I just put on a really lazy accumulator rounding down again. But this time in hundreds, so I think it was like nine thousand four hundred was the win. I put four hundred on an ACK, and that then got enough of three k by lunchtime. So I was at work. I was at work the next day. So three to nine, I'd had twelve, and that was that was in twenty sixteen, and that was probably one of the worst things that could ever happen because no win then for me was ever enough. No, unless it, unless it was four figures, you know, I, whereas before I would have been happy with a hundred quid. It was like, again, like my brain had rewired itself in addiction. It's, you know, it's very much like I say to people all the time is, you know, if you're, um, you know, you, you're a cocaine addict or you're a heroin addict or whatever, you need a bigger and bigger hit all the time. And mm. it's exactly the same. Or it was for me with gambling, you know, mm. once, I told my brain that I wasn't satisfied with 12K in 12 hours, basically. Seeing 200 pounds on that wing column suddenly didn't give me a buzz. It needed to be 20K. So it almost, the success, like, that's not success, but almost like the planning, like you mentioned earlier, of my betting, almost like regressed over the years. Like it got, it got worse. You know, I, by the end, I was just putting on blind, you know, accumulators just to just not even to to win just to see that potentially 25k okay yeah if that finishes two or one that's two one and yes you know just to see that number Mad. and you know i never repeated a win like that again but um blimey. yeah blimey. yeah so it's the worst thing to happen for sure blimey w- w- was that well i mean two two things that sort of spawned 
in my mind actually just to relate to that a little bit my mate um I don't know he might have been listening he, he might be listening to this podcast I, I don't know if his brothers will be but um uh, he won I don't know you, do you follow horse racing much or the Grand National or anything like that or um yeah I would I would put bets on Grand National but um yeah I, that would literally be I was never into horse 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 yeah. racing betting there yeah. okay yeah but well, well it was a couple of years ago and Tiger Roll won um uh, the, the the horse won and I remember all year he was saying back this horse back this horse and he had loads of free bets and he won quite a few grand on it and I remember it well I rung him up I couldn't believe it like you know celebrating down the phone with him and stuff like that but afterwards he was really like he was really good he was a bit like what your brother said he was like I know I will never ever get close to that again um, mm. and so he's just like he's just resorted to well from what I know anyway it's just these little bets now. I'm like, blimey. As an addict, I couldn't live with that because like you say, I just want to do more, 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 more. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that, but again, that, that, you know, that takes, that takes a discipline which, um, you know, addiction robs you of, unfortunately. You know, it's the same way, um, I mean, funny enough, I've not actually, you know, been, clean of uh, betting is, is also led at the moment to being uh, sober as well not that I feel like I've had a problem with alcohol but it's mm. just something I'm exploring and have so I've gone sort of three three four months without a drink but it, you know even when I was drinking um, you know I was fine to leave her three pints you know yeah. whereas the alcoholic can't you know so it's the same for me I well, you the the guy you know your, your mate who won a few grand in tiger oh cool he was happy to leave it there mm. i wasn't happy to leave it at 12 grand because if i win 12 grand why can't i win 20 and if i win 20 why can't i win 63 mm. you know so mm. that's um yeah again it's just you're, ch- you're chasing a dragon aren't you all the time in addiction i'm just that constant buzz and once you get numb to a level of win the only way to get that buzz is to to try and seek a bigger win, and inevitably that leads to bigger stakes and to more regular betting. And yeah, obviously it's just a cycle, you know, which inevitably, you know, uh, well, not inevitably, unfortunately, but you know, it must, it needs to come to a head at some point. Unfortunately, you know, it did for me in the mm. end. So, so Nick, if we can dive a bit more into your story then. So um, you said it was about 2016, you had this big win um, and then you were then like, you know, sort of chasing the dragon and things. So can you maybe sort of talk us through like what happened there? Like how bad did it get? What did it start to lead to? Did it start to, I don't know, um, what effects did it have on you? The, the addiction? Um, was it something that you were just all, in, you know, in company? I can't even get my words out. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, I still can't get my words out, but was it something that you were just, uh, I still can't get my words out. This is terrible, yeah, yeah, terrible know, podcasting. Know, just, yeah, it was I need to get consuming, the, yeah. All consuming. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, 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 yeah, I mean, it was, it was, and it wasn't, I think at, at that point. It, so between 2007, uh, 2007, I left uni, um, in July, 2008, I, um, got a job pretty much straight away in recruitment um, in a sales role and I did you know I was I was doing pretty well straight away um, so I was one of the, the top billers and stuff and mm. um, you know as part of that I was starting to earn quite good money as just a young guy you know I was 23 24 mm. and um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in a relationship at the time. I didn't have any dependence. So it was just all disposable. And the more I earned, the more I would bet. Mm. Um, now, you know, weirdly, and uh, you know, the uncomfortable truth, like I've tweeted quite a few times is, um, in a way, my gambling addiction helped me professionally maybe just the sector I was in, um, or I'm in, but maybe just the sector I was in, but because I was in sales and it was competitive and you do more deals, you get more money. I, you know, I've, I almost viewed it as a positive because I had been in the office, you know, with 
an office full of consultants and I would look at them and think, yeah, you know, I would look at them and think, yeah, you want to do a deal. I need to do a deal because I'm getting further and further into debt. You know, I lost 500 quid last night on West Brom and Fulham. I need to do a deal today. You know, so it, it was a really visceral need. And, you know, I, I, in a way, I almost felt like looking back, it like that almost gave me an edge hmm. because other people wanted it, but the addiction was getting me in a deeper and deeper hole. And I needed, I needed, I needed to do well. There was no, there was no other option. You know, I'd worked out that I'm going to have to earn my way out of this. Um, you know, because hmm. the debt was just spiraling. But unfortunately, again, it just, it, it compounded the problem. So the more I would uh, do well professionally, mm. the more I had to, to spend and lose my addiction. So it was a, it was a trap, Blimey. you know, that I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, couldn't find a way out of. And, and the debt was spiraling and spiraling out of control. Um, you know, this was the time of like payday, payday lendings and, you know, uh, I was earning good money by this point, you know, say like three or four years in, I was earning good money by this point. Um, but I was taking a payday loan out the day after my monthly salary. Wow. And I was earning, and I was earning good money. And I would take, I would take a uh, Wonga the day after. So we, we get paid on the 15th, right? On the 16th, I would take a Wonga. This, the peak of the debt was around 2013, 2014. Right. Um, I, you know, I had Wonga, Quick Quid, um, kind of lending stream. You know, I, I had accounts of all of them. And again, I would apply for a Wonga. You know, I mean, obviously the company, I think, got shut down in the end or whatever, or suddenly, you know, they got caught with by the, by the regulators. But, um, they they would just give money away. You know, you didn't know no reason for it. You ask for a grant, you get a grant. So with that grant, I would pay off whatever I needed to pay off. But say, you know, I would ask for more from Wonka than I needed because for us, I'd get a bit more play money as well. And then I'd lose that and then I'd get quick quid and then I'd get lending stream and it just, you know, a cycle that was just, by this point, I was probably... The, the peak of my credit card there was about 20, 20 K um, in credit, in credit card there. Um, yeah. And it was spiraling completely out of control. You had the pressure at this point because I'd risen, uh, what, 2013. I just started to manage a team. So I was perceived to be doing well, mm. but I wasn't driving a nice car. I was still renting. So start, the question started to, mm get asked then it's like where's all your money going and i would just palm it off and you know you can cover up can't you but because gambling makes you a very good liar right oh okay. gambling, addi- yeah. gambling addiction yeah makes you a very good Expert. liar so Expert. I would, yeah 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 like like horrifically yeah. horrifically so so yeah. people that you you love and yeah. you know you're just completely misleading them so if you can you know if i could lie to my parents and my partner there's no problem lying to people at work about where my money's going. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, yeah, I just, you know, I'm so spending less than that. Um, and uh, yeah, I decided to develop uh, alopecia um, because of the stress of, of the debt um, and covering up and, and trying. It started like five PPs. Blimey. Um, yeah. And five P became 20 P, became 50 P. Um, it came to about the size of a fist in the end on the right. side of my head. You know, right. and I just, I shaved off, shaved off all my hair. Yeah. Um, and I wow. put the stress down because I had just started to manage a team. I, it gave me an easy excuse. Mm. Like, I'm just really stressed with work. When the reality was, you know, I was desperately trying to gamble my way out of, uh, of the dirt I got into. So the alopecia lasted for about two years. Yeah. Blimey. Um, yeah. Wow. I, yeah, my goodness, it's quite hard to listen to, to be honest with you, Nick. It's, um, yeah, I mean, my, my sort of naivety or, or ignorance or whatever, I, I, I never realised you could get um, 
you know alopecia from 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 stress. I just thought it was like hereditary. That's that's how ignorant I am to 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 it. You know? No, you get. Um, I tweeted a few months back. It was alopecia awareness day. You know, and I I tweeted right. the progression of my five pence into a twenty, into a fifty, into a fist. Yeah. Um, there's different types of alopecia. You can get alopecia. Um, it's, it's called alopecia universalis, universalis or whatever. And that, it, that's where you lose your eyebrows, your hair on your arms. Mm. Mm. Mine was just localized, um, you mm. know, and purely stress related. You know, I went wow. to the doctors about it and they, they diagnosed it as yeah, stress related. But what added to the stress then was as it got bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, I, I, I just almost resigned myself to the fact, right, I am going to lose lose my gin lose my beloved ginger beard you know <laughs> lose my eyebrows you know you, you didn't know where it was going to end which mm. compounded the stress and made it worse you know um Blimey. so yeah you know like really dark times um mm. yeah because of that I mean, when i should have been when i should have been enjoying life you know i was yeah. doing so well professionally and i should have been i was in my like mid-20s you know sh- should have been absolutely loving life and in many ways I was, mm. but I was completely denying the fact of, of gambling. And unfortunately, like I've alluded to a few times, I've been to Vegas mm. uh, eight or nine times because right. with work, it, it was the reward trip. So the top bill is every year you would get sent on a plane to Vegas now. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Great, yeah. great, great. Yeah. yeah. Rubbing your hands at this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so that, you know, this, yeah, obviously the worst possible thing for me to do is to be going to Vegas once a year. I was going to so say that, that didn't help either. Yeah. I was going to say if, um, I've never been to Vegas and I remember my mates went quite early on, I think when they sort of hit 21 and they've been a few times and they would always ask me and I'd be like, no, not going not going not going um what's it what's it like uh it's um it's whatever you want it to be <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i've heard it some is, stories it, i have heard some stories from vegas you know <laughs> yeah it is it is literally that it's it's whatever you want it to be um yeah. whatever you want you can find whatever you want to do you can do yeah. um yeah it's the entertainment capital of the world and whatever entertainment you you are seeking uh, you will find, um, mm. but you know, it, uh, you know, recruitment is sales, and you know, it's that type of um, environment and stuff. And there was, there were people similar to me, who mm. you know, when I look back on it now, knowing what I know now and stuff, I'm like, and I'm not in touch with you know some of them anymore. But I'm like, uh, he he had a huge problem. His problem was not quite as bad as mine, but he had a problem his problem was probably worse than mine. You know, you would look around and think, right, X, Y, Z, they all, all had issues because they were exhibiting the same behavior I was, right? So yeah. the, the company would pay for everything so we could get tickets to, you know, any of the show, you know, whatever it might have been, whoever was in town. And, you know, we would often do that or, you know, you do the club nights if whatever DJ was there. And quite often, me and a few of the lads, we would just be like, no, we're not going to, we're going to turn down tickets to, I don't know, whoever it was at the time, right? Boys to Men or, you know, yeah. Jersey, Jersey Boys, um, you know, whatever. Cir- Cir- was Cir- in town. What was it? Cirque du Soleil? Cir- or Cir- Cir- yeah. Cir- du Soleil. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah they, they're always there. You know, what, whatever it was, we just got tickets for as a group, yeah. you know, we decided to go and do. There were a few occasions where me and a few of the other guys, we were just like, no, we're just going to, we're, you know, we're deep into a blackjack session. So we're just going to stay. Wow. Um, and I, I remember, and um, you know, me and a few of them would stay at the tables. You, you can do, I know it sounds ridiculous, but you can do, you can do 24 hours on a table in Vegas. No, like no, it's not an exaggeration. You can do 24 hours on a table. And you will see the you will see the different creepiers come and go. You're getting fed free drinks because if you're at the table, you are being fed free drinks. There's obviously there's no clocks. Yeah. You aren't allowed your phone at the table. So if right. you're sitting down, you're not even you know. Right. I've done. I just never liked wearing watches, so I never wear a watch. So you, you can easily, you know, and obviously there's no mirrors. There's, you just 
you can easily get caught up in in stuff and we were only there for three days and yeah i would spend hours and hours just not on my own but you know yeah with, with other people and yeah before we know it we'd start gambling on like thursday evening and the next thing you know so it's early hours of saturday morning and so well Bloody all you've done is move from one black check table to another you know maybe got some food for like 20 minutes in between um but i used to I like this is this is like the delusion of the addiction or just the way it warps your mind i felt sorry for the people who weren't doing that really yeah yeah so i felt so what do you mean you're all gonna go where, where are you going well we're off to the grand canyon okay cool no i did that last year so i'm just gonna stay and play roulette blimey right but it's a different helicopter tour you know it's this we're, we're doing a different thing and then we're going to go for a nice meal and in that french place after nah like me and x y said we're good we're good you know so i'm turning down life experiences mm. to, to gamble on a game i didn't you know if i wasn't in vegas i wouldn't have really enjoyed anyway but the whole like you i listened to uh, watched one of your vlogs the other day you know the first time you you went into a casino in leicester square and it's the lights and mm. You know, I was completely, for someone who doesn't like casino games, I was completely captivated by Vegas. Really? And, and, just, lo- and just loved. I would never gamble casino at home. You know, apart from occasionally, I'd just put something down on if I had some spare winnings, whatever. But um, I was completely captivated by Vegas. Yeah. yeah. And whilst I was there, all I wanted to do was gamble. Um, and again, that fed into a, you know, uh sort of self-fulfilling prophecy if you like I, I needed to do better at work because i needed the money or i wanted the money but the better i did at work it just meant i was going to vegas every year and then i would lose the money you know so it's just you're on a hamster's wheel of addiction mm. which just gets worse and worse and worse i, I saw something recently nick and and on, on your tweets and, and you mentioned about the competitive edge of, of someone that works in sales or recruitment or, you know, even professional sports as well. Um, do you right. think that's, do you think that's got a big part to play as well? That competitive edge? Yeah, uh, I definitely. I do. Um, yeah. Sports, sports people and sales people are, are very similar anyway. Um, and a lot of the guys I take on, you know, in our company, you know, the failed lower league footballers and stuff, you know, you, you have yeah. that competitive mindset to want to be in sales in the first place often. Yeah. Um, so no, I, I think it's definitely the case. I mean, I, I can sort of relate to the story of, um, of Paul Buck, mm. you know, the, the, the guys at uh, Epic. Yeah. Um, Cause he, he was, you know, doing extremely well in the financial sector, um, which is, similar you know in, mm. in terms of the mindset of competitiveness and stuff mm. um yeah i think it had a huge huge part to play i just loved winning yeah i just loved winning you know and if if i didn't have a win that day at work and i had a shit day uh sorry for swearing sorry no it's fine yeah no, no no you go uh, for it uh, you go for it yeah <laughs> Yeah, had a corrupt day, had a poor day. Um, <laughs> I would come home and think, right, where can I get a win from? Okay, well, I, I know I, where I can get a win from. There's the 7.45 kickoff in League One, so I can get a win from there. Or if I, and then it, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's black and it's white, right? So if I didn't have a win, I needed a win in the evening, and that yeah. had to come from gambling. Where if I had a really good day, and I did two or three deals, I was on cloud nine. Yeah. Let's keep up the momentum. Let's keep winning. Right, so let's go home and bet more. So it, it was uh, a, a conditioning, you know, where I was living in this constant, um, constant cycle of stress. Mm. You know, mm. stress at work. Do something, you know, do something which is going to relax you when you get home. You know, do something which is going to nourish, you know, all the stuff I, you know, I've been doing the last 10 months. Mm. Well, certainly last, you know, half of that anyway, Um, you know, do something to nourish you and sustain you something which is going to make you, you know, feel, feel good and um, give you some balance in your life and do something you enjoy. But no, I would just 
be at work and I'd be wired, you know, for 11 hours a day. And then I'd come home and I'd be wired in the evening. So I'm checking the scores all the time. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, it's so unhealthy. Oh, 100%. 100%. I can relate to what you just said there with regards to the competitiveness and, and things. I mean, um, for me, it was like, right, I've gonna pl- I'm going to play roulette and I need to play until my black 17 comes out. I have to keep playing. If it comes out straight away, oh, right, okay, fine. I'm going to keep playing until it comes back out again. Um, yeah. You know, and that kind of mindset. And then I wasn't happy until I lost all my money. I say happy, but like settled because I, I could actually finally stop because I was like, well, I've run out of money now. Um, so, yeah. But by the way, Paul's got an incredible story. I listened to him on All Bets Are Off podcast, and I think that was for a short sort of snippet. And then I listened to him on All In, Addict- the Addicted Gambit yeah, podcast. Yeah, that's, that's the one I listened to, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, it's quite an in-depth one, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was brilliant. Fasc- yeah, fascinating story, yeah. Yeah, absolutely um, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, one I relate to, you know, uh, Yeah, for a lot of that. Yeah, yeah it was good. I'm going to... um. An absolute uh, sales pitch from here, for, uh, you know, from the Invisible Addiction HQ here. But I'm going to try and get hold of. Well, Paul's kind of, I think, semi agreed. Well, I say semi. We he's agreed to come on the podcast. So there we go. People can look out for that in the next series. So um, there we go. That's that's a, that's a key. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, yeah. I've not had a lot of communication with him, but um, yeah, any that I have, you know, he's uh, he's a gentleman. So yeah, he's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I can relate to the unhealthiness as well. Um, you talk about the stress. I mean, for me, sort of stopping gambling and really a big part of my recovery was just doing simple things like not being wired anymore or uh, getting better sleep. I couldn't sleep. You know, that was the thing. I was really worried about going to bed. So I'd sp- start smoking and smoking weed and drink. I started to drink. It was just like trying to just chase the dragon. And um, yeah, t- just all the unhealthiness and the, the ongoing stress. It it was rec- I went to see um, my parents recently and they sort of commented and they said, Alex, that's the happiest we've seen you in years. And it's so yeah. true. And it was such a nice thing to hear because I am a lot happier now and, and, and with the recovery side of things. And um, just to think back about all the unhealthy habits, the stress, um, that, that constant weight on your shoulders of living this lie and um, like you say about the kind of the cycle that you're in, you know, the stresses of not having any money. So I need to make money. So I'll gamble. I wasn't doing it for escapism. And then, um, yeah, it's just, it's a horrible, horrible hamster wheel, like you say. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I can relate there, but, um, yeah. So where should we pick the story back up? Um, so we, how did you, how did it how did it rear its ugly head so it sounded like you were in vegas and you're in this sort of cycle and i guess this is what 2016 maybe 17 i mean am i right in saying that you kind of you you cleared your credit card debt in 2016 perhaps but then you were having sporadic bursts of like you kind of giving it up but you kind of had sporadic bursts in and out of gambling for a couple of years yeah yeah so um yeah uh yeah 2017 um yeah, I was with uh, a new partner um, and, you know, she knew I liked to gamble, but, you know, didn't know the full scale of it. So, it, you know, it, it, it died down, you know, I, I sort of, you know, was, was uh, found happiness and stuff and, you know, I, it, it died down, but um, it would flare up again if I had, you know, a stressful a particularly stressful week or you know a stressful day and you know gradually i would get back into it again and then i'd write okay no look and stop again so i i flirted with the idea of stopping between 2017 and 2019 but like i said right at the beginning um you know that wasn't necessarily the best thing to do you know you can't do any you, you, it's cold turkey or nothing right you know you mm. can't you can't half quit an addiction. Um, so all it did for me was if I would go, you know, a few weeks about a bet or whatever, um, it might've been all I would do would just chuck way more money the next time I did bet. you know, it almost, it almost like allow myself that. I'd be like, oh, you've not, you've not had a bet in three weeks. So you've got X, Y, Z, you would have lost or you would have bet, you know, you're, you're, you're allowing yourself what you would have done. 500 quid that weekend so add that on you've got like 1500 quid to play with right great 
So, it, it, yeah. you know, it, it wasn't healthy because they would still lose the same amount, but it would just be in slightly shorter bursts. Um, and it carried on, you know, carried on like that for uh, a couple of years, you know, trying to quit. Um, certainly aware I've got a problem mm. right at this point. And, you know, um, mm. Mm. I, you know, I, I'd taken up more hobbies by this point to try and distract myself. Um, so I started uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, I play snooker, you know, so I was starting to proactively, you know, know what I needed to do, you know, recovery yeah. needs replacement and recovery needs redirection. So I was starting to try and do these bits, but say it would just flare up. Um, and it came to a head really in uh, October, which is over a year ago. So it's over 2019. And, um, you know, anything you say is going to sound like an excuse i'm not saying it's an excuse but um my dad was in hospital for a month um he was quite seriously ill so and uh him and my mum had divorced uh, my brother lives away on the isle of man so i was the primary carer if you like mm. um whilst obviously holding down a career and all the rest of it and it was just you know incredibly stressful time and that was my coping mechanism at the time, to cope with stress. So I had uh, I had a bonus come through that month, like a quarterly bonus um, of 10 grand. And I would be putting bets on at my dad's, you know, by his hospital bed. Um, if he was, if I got there and he was sleeping, you know. Um, And I, yeah, I did 10 grand in a week. Um, and it was at that point then we were saving for a house uh, and we we, pre- we we got what we needed to get basically as a deposit and it was looking pretty healthy. Mm. But we were, you know, like most first-time buyers, we were going to stretch yourself and go for a completely different, um, like, you know, something that we could have afforded, but we maybe would have needed to wait another six months for but i was mm. like well look, with this 10 grand we could probably go for that place mm. and then you know i had to come clean and say that 10 grand is gone basically in a week of hospital visits mm. um and that was the point i came clean and yeah she gave me a gave me an ultimatum um and yeah you, you know you need a reason for recovery and and she was that we're not together anymore um, mm. because I, you know, made a complete mess of, of lockdown and trying to recover from addiction in lockdown. I replaced one addiction with another by working too hard mm. amongst many other mistakes, mm. most of which wasn't talking. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, at the time, you know, we were together and, and she was the reason for recovery. So then I started therapy. Um, arranged by Gamcare, um, which okay. was great. And it was great. And, you know, I registered with Gamstop and, you know, I'd mm. opened up to uh, my partner at the time and I, I'd started Gambling Guards, you know, it's like an accountability journal, which is recommended by the therapist. Mm. So there's a few things that I started to do, um, you know, well, but uh, the problem I made was I didn't confront my addiction, you know, mm. so I was still... Although I wasn't uh, addicted to gambling anymore, I was essentially still the same person I was. I didn't address the issues I needed to address. Mm. Um, And an example of that was even whilst in therapy, you know, I would come home and my partner would would say, you know, how was it and stuff. And, you know, I remember saying that it's like, no, it's cool, it's like, it's good. But I've I've worked her out. You know, I've, I've, I've got, I've got, you know, I've, I've worked her out. Um, yeah, you know, it, uh, as if it was a, as if it was a game and a competition again. Yeah. You know, so I was still, although I wasn't gambling, I was still not in a recovery mindset whatsoever. Um, yeah, but I thought I thought I nailed it. I thought I nailed it. So I stopped really talking about it with my partner, trying to project, you know, an image of control and, you know, comfort in recovery when I was really struggling still, you know, was, this is the early days mm. of recovery, doing it in lockdown, 
which took away all of the routine and all of the opportunities to talk to different people and open up and stuff. Mm. And it was the disaster, um, an absolute disaster. I, I didn't talk to anybody. Um, I withdrew more and more into myself. Um, yeah. So, uh, that the relationship ended, unfortunately. Mm. And that then is what made me finally confront it. And when I say confront it, and this is the biggest thing I would recommend, um, which I can understand why some people don't want to do. Mm. The biggest thing I'd recommend, you know, to help your recovery is you need to, however, you know, you can do it, you know, if maybe like yourself, you know, it's more casino based or whatever, but because mine was all with mainly two bookies, I did a subject access request. Um, that actually applied for in April, but mm. didn't have the balls to go through until August. And it was when I finally went through it um, and I saw the figure of £447,880. The, the penny dropped then for me. Yeah. The penny dropped. And that was when I was like, right, I am. I, I hadn't bet, I hadn't relapsed, mm. but I was still of the mindset that I can, I can see myself betting again at some point. And it was mm. at that moment um, where. I, I, you know, I knew and I made peace of it and I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm at peace of it now. Yeah. Yeah. It was the moment I stopped chasing is the way I describe it. I've been chasing for 12 years mm. and it was the moment I finally stopped chasing. That's the figure I've lost. It's never going to get any bigger now and it's never going to get any smaller. You know, I'd open the box. I'd open a Pandora's box. I got the figure and that's all I needed. Um, and I don't want to sound, yeah. to make it sound simplistic because you know I just lost no. a relationship. No, even even in recovery, you know. So I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not a uh, um, you know I'm not a template on how to do the first six months of recovery. But I am pleased to say that the the six months afterwards, you know, I'd finally addressed what I should have addressed in the January, mm. um, and. Yeah, that was the moment I, I sort of made peace of it. I say like you, you can't recover unless you know what you're recovering from. Mm. And mm. I was still deluding myself in those, it, between January and August, I was still deluding myself. I, I looked at a tweet, an old tweet. I had guessed 150K. Right. And it was three, <laughs> it was three times that. You know, and that's oh without goodness. Vegas. Yeah. You know, I guessed 150K. It was 450 Bloody plus man. plus nine trips to Vegas at probably 5k a time. So you're talking a half a million, you know, and for me, that's what I needed. You know, I needed that, you know, I needed that right hook, you know, in the eyes. But like, that's the figure, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, it's shoved down my throat. Like. So, so just for anyone that doesn't know, so a subject to access is, sorry, what, could you just, kind of define what that yeah, is so, so you just getting in touch with the, the company or, or yeah yeah so it's a subject access request um which uh it gives you all of your account history basically okay. so you can um you email them asking for full details of your account if anyone wants to email me i've got a template where they can um or message me on instagram or twitter Great. or whatever yeah i've got a template right um and they give you a full account history in, in a Excel file, um, right. which they send you as a zip, a zip file. So it's all securely done stuff. Mm, mm, um, mm. And uh, yeah, from there, obviously you can work out, it shows you all your deposits, it shows you all your wins, it shows you all your losses. Um, mm. And it makes for pretty stark reading. You know, in the nature mm. of any any gambling addict, it's always going to be worse than you thought it was going to be, because you know we we downplay it, don't we? We forget yeah. the losses. You know, yeah. the losses don't mean anything because we're chasing the next win all the time. So mine just had, you know, I, I spent an afternoon in the summer going through it, and you know, with tears rolling down my face. You know, it's the the shame of it. But it was when I completed it, it was. Um, probably partly because rather than crying all afternoon about it as well, but you know, it was so empowering to do by the end of the afternoon. Yeah. Um, which is why I put the tweet out to be like, right, you know, this is, this is it. I was just, mm. um, 
I wanted people to know that I had felt like I'd finally addressed it because I hadn't addressed it even in recovery. I hadn't addressed it for me until I knew that that allowed me to, to really confront it and just seeing the figures of it. Mm. 15,260 bets, 5,915 deposits over 4,418 days. Now, as I said, there were periods, there were weeks and occasional periods of months where I didn't bet. So even without those, it makes the figure even larger. But even if you include, if you said I was betting every day, which I wasn't mm. for 12 years, I'd say for three bets a day, every day for 12 years. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. That's, that runs deep. That, 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 yeah, that's, those, those figures are startling, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. So, 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 yeah. so did you, did you find, did, when you got those stats, did you, did you have to physically, you know, to go through and count every single one sort of thing? Um, so they don't, they don't send it in the most user friendly format. Um, no, but you can, you know, if you know, if you have know your way around Excel, you can set up a rule you know, which will come Yeah, 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 of course. And, yeah. It will, yeah. and it will strip, strip out columns and it will strip out yeah. column not including, you know, if you know your way around Excel. But again, if anyone doesn't, then, you know, yeah. let me know. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it took hours. It took, you know, it took probably four, four or five hours to go for it. I mean, the, the Excel file for Betfair alone was over 3,000 pages of Excel. I was just and I was just Betfair, um, Jeez. and I stopped stopped betting with Betfair in probably 2017, 2018 and moved to Paddy Power. Um, blimey, blimey, and, yeah, yeah, blimey. So, so were you ever classes of what you know a, a VIP customer? Were you ever treated differently or at um, Paddy, at, yeah. just, just why I started to bet more with Paddy Power? Yeah, they right. they quickly clocked you know how much i was losing and you know would just give me free bets so really? every time i'd log in there'd be a hundred quid in there it's a free bet um yeah and i remember the, i remember the call they put in the, the call i was i was out um it was after work and i was out with some some workmates and i got a call from you know turn up from paddy power and they said you know great news um you know you gold vip or whatever it is what football team do you support we'll get you some tickets like what what sports are you interested in Blimey. um i said you know i i, I like boxing and mma you know like okay yeah we, we we'll make a note of that we'll sort some stuff out and i remember putting the phone down and celebrating for mates you know high five and it's like get in you know as if it was a badge of honor when it was the most shameless thing they could have done you know I was losing hand because by the you know it it was around the you know the the, the, the ten grand in a week type time. Blimey, you know, you know so it, it, yeah. I'm not I'm not uh, you know despite all of my addictions I'm not you know someone who would say to people never gamble because you know it's like anything the majority of people can gamble safely but I certainly couldn't. And the fact that there was no intervention other than to clearly implement what they knew would only deepen the addiction even further. Mm. It, you got to say it's shameless, you know, and I, I, I don't, yeah. I don't want to throw stones because, mm. you know, mm. I've made, you know, innumerable mistakes over 12 years, mm. but um, they have, they have the they have all the knowledge they have all the algorithms to help people because they know who is clearly addicted and well, they they've got 3000 the pages of it they've got 3000 pages of it you know right you yeah. know it yeah and the stakes and and you know they know the patterns of deposits and then he's deposited again within a time frame and he's deposit that's his fifth deposit a day you know of the day or whatever mm. they have all of the facilities to do it but instead of using those algorithms of gambling harm positively and intervening, they, at least they have done, they've used mm. them, you know, to uh, deepen the addiction with, with VIP schemes. 
mm. and there's been some awful cases of mm, mm, you know, which mm. you'll be aware of, of of suicide and stuff and it's there it's it's there it's there but for the grace of god go i you know there's no reason why you know the poor guys you know and we've seen the stories who have um taken our lives mm. there's nothing to say that wouldn't have been me that couldn't have been me you know um yeah did, did how 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 dark did it get for you um i it, this this uh isn't going to be the most inspiring thing to say um but the lowest point for me was in recovery mm. so my my rock bottom was yeah six months into recovery and my partner at the time, we were four weeks away from moving into the house that we bought. Um, you know, and that was what I've been working for for years. And, and, you know, because I was still in the addiction mindset, I self sabotaged that. I didn't deserve that happiness. I didn't deserve, um, you know, the fact that my life was finally going to be where, I, where it should have been for years, free of addiction. I didn't deserve that in my mind. Um, so I self-sabotaged that and, uh, and yeah, and, and left the relationship mm. within 24 hours. You know, I immediately regretted it. And mm. it was mm. probably those, those two months then between the end of the relationship, which was from self-sabotage, until going through the subject access request and confronting my addiction finally they were the lowest two months of my life um by a hell of a distance mm. by a hell of a distance so mm. um i don't want you know that's not to put people off recovery at all because it, it's so necessary and you, you you know please if anyone's listened to this and any of this you relate to any of this don't wait 12 years to do it and confront it. And then when you are in recovery, don't wait eight months to confront your addiction. And if you're in recovery, you need to recover. Mm. So there's no point being in recovery and denying the fact you were addicted or trying to outwit your therapist. It's like, you're either doing it, you're not doing it. Um, yeah. So we've got, yeah, pretty, mm. pretty fucking dark um, for those those two months yeah which yeah 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 it's um it, it's really interesting you say about like trying to outwit are you okay for time by the way um yeah i'm okay? fine yeah okay yeah. cool cool yeah. cool cool um yeah um yeah i mean it's funny you say about like trying to outwit your therapist and, and things like that i mean i self-excluded from um land-based casinos late 2017 and then um started to confront in sort of 2018 like ongoing issues with a with a counselor but that was more to do with um like trying to get to the root of an addiction and also um i was trying to give up marijuana which was that's a whole different ball game but that was another addiction in itself um but i remember going to the therapist and uh yeah you're it's so interesting that you say it was like trying to outwit them um she, she asked me all these questions and straight away i was just like Oh, I know her game. She's just asking me questions. She's just doing that leading thing where she just repeats what I say and then makes me think about something and then right. doesn't actually give me any advice or any tips. It's just, and, 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 and I came away from that and the third, second or third one, she was like, Oh, you're fine. You're fine. And I was like, yeah, I am fine. I hadn't told her anything about the gambling. Um, nothing at all. Um, but then it was a real slow process that, that was the whole kind of recovering from, um, the, the drug addiction as it were um so, I'm, so it sounds like i'm sort of trying to downplay that that, that was a, a big addiction of mine and um and then that was but then i was still going into bookies i was just replacing the not being able to go into casinos so i was just going into bookies um right, right you know and then betting online uh like just trying to kind of kid myself and then broke up with my girlfriend walked out not not happy at, you know not not um fond of that at all um and then yeah some recent you walked you 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 so basically the same as i did so you sabotage the relationship yeah yes yeah. i mean just, it's just, it, yeah yeah this is the thing with you know addiction is 
you know, it's, it's an illness. And there's mm. the, the way I look at it, you know, it, it is it is an illness. I mean, there's no two ways around that. And I look at it like there's a DNA of the illness. You know, it's like, mm. like, you know, they've worked out the vaccine for COVID. Okay, well, they've worked out the DNA and the structure of it. Okay, well, look, the stuff you've said and the stuff I've said, you know, we both sabotage relationships. That's the DNA of the addiction. You know, you don't deserve happiness if you're an addict. You can't make the other person happy. That's what you tell yourself. It's just, I mean, it's okay. fascinating to hear you say that because it's so, so similar. Yeah. Yeah. No, to, it's, you know. yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's interesting. And I wonder if, like when my mum said to me the other day, she said, oh, you're a lot happier. I wonder if it's because entering into this like this well online community and i know everybody says it and i say it quite a lot but it is an amazing place it's amazing to meet people like yourself um and and so many others but i think the reason why i'm probably happy is because all of a sudden i realize rather than feeling just this really weird imposter that felt completely unnormal completely different to everyone in the world all of a sudden i i now see people i'm like and Jeff, Jeff Weisman says this again, sorry, <laughs> another podcast coming up, but um, he, he says this and it's so true. It's like he realized that it's the first time that you realize there's other people like me on this planet. You, right. You're, you're, you're a bit, I, I've, okay, I can see myself in, 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 you know, in others. And all of a sudden I don't feel alone. And all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, we, we must be the wired kind of in a similar way. Um, so it's, yeah, maybe that's, I've just come to kind of peace with it all and kind of gone, right, okay, fine, yeah. Yeah, it, you do need to come to peace with it. You know, I say, um, you know, it's the, the, the three A's is what I like to call it. So you need, you need acceptance. You know, I, it's a, uh, I, I took it from Russell Brand. You know, he's a bit of a, you know, he is what he is. People have to have used Russell Brand, but he's been through the mill with addiction yeah. you know so he does you know again he's got lived experience so yeah. anyone who's been through lived experience has so much respect for and you know so right one you know accept there's a problem your life's chaotic and you know there's there's a better way you know your life doesn't need to be like this um so you, you know acceptance number two accountability um the acceptance is brands i've sort of added on the other two mm. but accountability you, you you've got to let people know um, so yeah. for me, my mistake was, although I let my partner know, that didn't really do much because she was incredibly supportive, but I didn't want to burden her by talking to her too much about it because I didn't want to hurt her or burden her. So had I told more people, mm. I wouldn't have felt, I would have ironically spoken to her more because in my mind, I would have shared the burden, shared the load. So acceptance accountability and then access now you know access with you know gambling addiction fortunately there's some pretty good tools out there um not silver bullets mm. but pretty good tools you know you can register with gamstop or physically you can register with moses or you can download gamban um you know there are there are tools out there which which do really help um so if you've got acceptance accountability and access you're on your way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so it's, it's interesting you say about the sort of like the kind of the coming out kind of story. And when you, when you, before you did that tweet, was it something you'd been thinking about the, the viral tweet? I mean, it's, it was what, I mean, it was shared like, what have I got down here? Nearly, nearly 30,000 likes and 13,000 like retweets. I mean, it's like, it's unbelievable. What, 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 was it get the gam care thing? Was it that was it that that spurred you to release that tweet, or was it just something that you no, were like? That, that was the subject of access request. That yeah. was coming to peace with yeah. you know with what I've lost. So draw a line, right? Yeah. You, you can't recover until you know what you're recovering from. Sure. You know I, I'm recovered, and I say that fully understanding that people see you're not recovered. Yeah. You know I like someone I've got just you know absolute sandbags of respect for his uh, Andy Margaret, who you, you, yeah. know, you know as well. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, yeah. you know, and, and he's, he's been clean for a hell of a lot longer than me. So who am I to say? But, um, you know, I also, I enjoy the thinking of Ed Stoner um, mm. from Now We Win and stuff. And, you know, I think he views it 
a bit like I do, like it's a public health issue, it's an illness, and you can go into remission from an illness. Mm. So if if I don't say I'm recovered, for me, it's a very personal thing, but for me, I you know was going through the first eight months of recovery, constantly worried about having a bear because I was a recovering addict. Mm. It's just a mental thing for me. If I'm a recovered addict, I've got the freedom. So that's what gave me the confidence to, you know, tell my story. And it was at that point then that I, I you know, I, I still have the, the pseudonym of Gambling Guide, but I mean, my name's Nick Graves and I'm not hiding who I am because my face is on my videos. Mm. Um, that was the point where I was like, right, I'm just going to, yeah, I, you know, I, I want to do that because I want to get free to people and I want, I want, people to relate to me mm. you know if, mm. you know people have suggested to me go to gamblers anonymous meetings and stuff and, and i did try it uh, but it wasn't for me but i would completely respect you know what it's done for people mm. um mm. but there's a perception you know gambling addicts are going to be older guys you know in just betting on the nags you know and it's yeah i wanted to just you know for the younger guys out there you know younger guys or girls whatever to come on and see one of my videos and think right he looks fairly normal okay i've got a ginger beard and you know massive nose but he looks he looks fairly normal right? you, you look so, very normal to me my friend so don't worry about yeah. that yeah. you know yeah. so i want and i wanted that in itself to reduce the stigma and shame so right he looks like a normal guy yeah um and he's he's a gambling addict yeah. you know so i don't mind referring to myself as a gambling addict because mm. i am you know and i was mm. but i i don't i choose not to refer to myself as a recovering gambling addict yeah i'm a, I'm a recovered gambling addict and people would disagree and, and agree and that's fine yeah um but you know it recovery is a very personal thing and so that that's my personal take on it yeah. And I want people to feel the freedom of recovery and what it can give you and not be something that defines you. Sure. That, that is so interesting. So interesting. Um, it's, it's something that's really bothered me with the whole, the terms and recovery and am I in recovery? It, you know, should you even use that word? But I like the fact that you've said you recovered because um, I heard it. Um, Alex Macy did a podcast recently with uh, all in the addictive addicted gamblers podcast as well and i heard him say and he said he felt you know he feels like he's recovered um and and initially i was a bit like oh like can you say that you know because like well what if you kind of slip in and i think there is this stigma isn't there with the whole recovery thing like you said you know the first eight months or whatever you, you feel like you you might relapse which is fair enough you might kind of dive back yeah. in you might not and but that just adds on to this burden of like this this the weight of the guilt you know like the shame of on yourself you know um right exactly so, yeah and you know you yeah again it, i i don't uh you know like andy market you know knowingly and unknowingly you know he's taught me so much um just yeah. from observing his videos and you know not always in direct communication with him but also we've messaged a lot previously mm. and he's given mm. really good advice but um you know so i'm not i'm not saying i disagree with that viewpoint of you know, recovering and, um, you know, Jamie from Problem Gambling, Northern Ireland, he's got a great quote, isn't he? He says, no, I can never buy a raffle ticket or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, no, I, I get that too. I get that too. You've, you've, you've got to find, you know, you've got to find your own truth, if you like, in recovery. And, mm. and for me, you know, for me, that was it. And, but, but Gambling God in itself has helped massively because it does keep me accountable, you know, and yeah. it does... I try and, uh, I don't want to sound all new age. Now I'm in recovery. I just feel like, <laughs> you know, I try and, you know, my tagline is promoting the positivity and opportunity of recovery, mm. which I didn't allow myself in the first six months. Mm. Mm. And I have done, you know, my life is, is completely different in the way I spend my time and, yeah. you know, much more holistic, um, sort of outlook on life completely. Um, so there is positivity, there is opportunity in recovery and there is life after addiction. 
Oh, well, I'm going to have to use that as a soundbite. You know, that's an incredible, incredible. Um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again then in a slightly yeah. less <laughs> <laughs> No, it's absolutely no, no, no. That's uh, sorry. That's like it's, it's. I'm watering down what what uh, what I can only agree with. Um, I think that you know I'm blowing smoke here, but the, the, the stuff that you do, I, I just love the way that you use humor or comedy for any for any of the listeners if you've not seen it you know do check out um nick's page it's you know the, the gambling guard at at gambling guard is that both twitter and instagram yeah tiktok uh twitter instagram um yeah yeah look for me humor is just a way to combat shame and embarrassment and mm. you know it's a difficult subject to talk about and it is and there's some amazing people you know in the twitter community um you know, when we've mentioned a few of them, you know, who, mm. who do, do do work, you know, in, in different spheres, as professions, um, regulatory sides, you know, mm. um, you know, that's not my battle. You know, I, I really respect what they do and I couldn't do that. But what I want to do is to get people to, you know, stumble across a video and think, oh, that's me or that's my boyfriend or that's my girlfriend. Mm. And you know, suddenly they've, you know, in through a more accessible, maybe less, um, you know, less serious way of tackling the subject, they might relate to it a bit more and, and confront their problem, hopefully. Mm. Um, and, you know, by the messages I've, I've got and, you know, the people have helped, I, you know, I'm humbled to say, I know I, uh, I have done that and I'm doing that. So um, I would do it if it didn't help anyone because it helps me. The fact that it helps other people as well is, yeah, something which uh, humbles me. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. I must, I must say as well, by the way, just for a bit of research, I was, um, I, I signed up to, I was like, right, how do I work TikTok? Because by the way, I'm like really illiterate. I can do Instagram, I can do Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and all that. But I was like, right, I'll go onto TikTok. I was on my laptop. I'll go onto TikTok. And I was like, right, I'll just go and search. I can't search. How can, how do I search? And then I was like, right, we have to log it. So I had to sign up and I was like, right, if I sign up, surely they'll let me search for gambling card. I couldn't find you. So I'm like, well, I've got an account, but I couldn't find you. So uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. It's all, not, all it's the, not, all the kids it's at not school. Twitter, but yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. all, all the kids at school are down with it. They're like, what, sir, you've not, you don't know what you're doing. I'm like, I haven't got a clue. They're doing all these dances right. in class and you know, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't for anyone listening, if you if you're gonna watch the video and hope that I dance, yeah, you're in the wrong place. But maybe that's for another page. Some, yeah. Some, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my yeah. personal account. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah, yeah. but uh I say look, it, it's um it's approaching an extremely serious topic in a fun way, and that's not to downplay it. You know, I've it's uh you know, has cost me half a million pounds. It's lost me, you know, uh, you know, my relationship, my whole base in life. It's, it's cost me, um, you know, it's led me to some incredible, incredibly dark places. Um, and it's, it's those places I don't want anyone else to, to be in. Um, so yeah, but if it helps people then great, but it's just more stuff like that, the better, you know, the, the podcast you do, Ryan and Chris, you know, and Kish, who feel mm-hmm. bets are off. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said about Brian and Jamie Salzberg, you know, the, mm. you know, you said about Alex and Gun Visory, you know, mm. the, the, and, all, and all the rest, Epic and all the guys, yeah. you know, there's so many people doing so many good things. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, okay. So looking to, to wrap things up, I mean, is there anything, um, Anything you'd like to add? Um, obviously, we've said where people, people can find you on social media. And yeah, have you, have you got anything that you want to add that maybe you haven't said or anything that you would like to kind of summarize, as it were? No, I, I, no, I think, you know, probably taken. If anyone's still listening, Christ, they, you know, this if, could anyone's be the still, if, if anyone is still interested, you can message me yeah, at Gambling Guard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, Brilliant, brilliant. Um, yeah, I, I was going to say, I sort of said, by the way, you know, for the listeners' benefit, I sort of said to Nick before, I was like, right, we'll um, we'll work around about an hour. And um, I've just sort of, I've deliberately looked at the clock, and I thought I'm going to just try and, 
I should be paying you on an hourly rate. You know, we're well into <laughs> overtime. We're well into overtime now, you know. Um, but no, look, in, in all seriousness, I really appreciate you, um, you coming on and, and sharing your story. It's um, selfishly, you know, as I say, I do, the, I do the podcast for myself, to be honest with you. And uh, selfishly, because it helps me. And obviously, trying to help others as well. Um, so, yeah, um, selfishly, I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I could probably keep talking, but it's about dinner time now, isn't it? So, <laughs> so we need yeah. to uh, and if, uh, get on. Yeah. 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 Anyone who does follow me, follow, follow Alex in his podcast, because, um, yeah, he's had some incredible conversations, which uh, are inspiring and, you know, I learn a lot from. So, yeah, if anyone's listening, in this word action, get Very, involved. Oh, there you go you're very kind very kind <laughs> well um no thank you very much thank you very much well look nick um it's been an absolute pleasure uh thanks once again and i will i'll speak to you soon cheers thanks alex it takes a huge amount of bravery to tell your story publicly so i'd like to say a massive thank you to nick once again for his honesty and reflections i could really resonate with a lot of what Nick said throughout the podcast, especially the self-sabotage of a relationship. During a gambling addiction, it's common to feel unworthy and undeserving. It's not until you stop gambling that you realize what made you feel that way. It's inspiring to hear of Nick's recovery and I've become a massive fan of his gambling addiction awareness videos on social media. I definitely recommend giving him a follow. Nick mentioned the use of payday loans during his gambling addiction. so. I'd like to examine this a little bit further. Let's find out in the next episode when I speak to former radio presenter and payday loans campaigner, Danny Cheatham.